Welcome everybody to the BeerNet webinar. I'm uh, Jean Eudon Ambroise, head of sales here at BeerNet, and today we're going to talk about soft migrations. Quickly regarding the webinars, if you have questions, feel free to ask those questions in the question tool, and I will take the time at the end of the presentation to answer all your demands. So first of all, who is BeerNet? Uh, we are a Berlin-based company who design, who've been designing for more than 40 years, 14 years now, VoIP hardware. And uh, the particularity of our solutions is that they are all made in Germany. So that was the quick point about BeerNet. I'm just going to talk about the soft migration. Nowadays, uh, we've seen all across Europe that uh, PSTN is going away. So there is a trend to all IP and all IP means that a lot of end customers need to change their telecommunication system. The change in the telecommunication systems mean that integrators, carriers and manufacturers such as BeerNet will have lots of opportunities in this new world because lots of change will happen companies will move from their old telecommunication system to a new one, either directly or via a soft migration. When companies make such changes in their telecommunication system, if those changes happen too fast, there is a high risk of failure, meaning that the technician taking care of the migration might make a small mistake and then the system will stop working or will stop working for a while or the phone calls will not go, will not be routed properly and so on. So if we make the changes very quickly, then we can have bad experience. Therefore, we advise companies who have a certain number of employees using the telecommunication system to do a soft migration for different reasons. First, the idea is to slowly migrate to the new VoIP system in order to minimize the risk of failure. Of course, in a soft migration, you usually know very well the IPBX, but you don't know the traditional telecommunication system that the client has. So this can create problems because you don't know how this system works, and very often you cannot change it. So you need to adapt. Another aim of the soft migration is to make sure that employees get used to the new devices and system. Very often they switch their old ISDN telephone or analog telephone for a new brand, new SIP phone and well habits have to change, it doesn't happen the same way and so on. So people have to adapt and doing a soft migration might help for doing so. Usually you take part of the employees, you migrate them, then they talk to each other, employees using the new system tell the other ones how great it is and so on, and so people get to know it, they accept it faster. So I made a little drawing. At the beginning, the end client has such a system with the PBX connected to the ISDN thanks to an ISDN line. Uh, it, I just wrote ISDN, it doesn't matter if it's BRI or PRI, it doesn't matter how many lines you have, uh, it's just ISDN for the moment. And the idea is to change to the new situation, meaning to have a brand new IPPBX. The IPPBX can be located in the company, in the cloud, or somewhere else. It doesn't matter. So new, meaning new telecommunication line, new telecommunication system, and new phones. Um, when you have a big company you're taking care of, this is quite a change and uh, it can be a bit complicated to move everything from one system to, to the other within a day. Therefore, we usually advise to make such a soft migration where you connect your traditional PBX to the IPBX thanks to a VoIP gateway. In this case, you need to be, to be very careful in the dial plan of your gateway because the gateway links everything. 
So if you make a mistake in the gateway, um, then nothing is going to work. And if the client is using one of those systems uh, and the gateway is not configured well, then um, well, the, not, the client is not going to be happy and you're going to call us. So the idea is to be sure of the dial plan and to uh, make sure that everybody everything works well. So what do we want to do? We want to make sure that both endpoints of both systems can call each other, first of all. We want that the extensions within the IPBX can call outside and receive calls from the outside. And we want that the PBX can call outside and receive calls as well. So there's quite a lot of things to consider. And that's what we're going to so see today and um, take a look at the dial plan in order to make sure that everything works properly. So there are some information you need to know. And once you know those information, you can define others. On the PBX side, you need to know a few things. Once again, you cannot change everything. So if the, the extensions are three-digit extensions, for example, you cannot come and say, well, now there are four digits. Uh, people usually want to keep their habits. And it's what you need to try to do when you s migrate people from one system to the other is to minimize the number of changes they're going to undergo. So you need to know the length of the extensions of the PBX the rules of the dial plan, for example, what we're going to do today and say it's that people need to dial a zero to call out. And depending on all this, you will also know the habits of the users. And once you know everything, you can also define the length of the extensions within the IPBX, usually you take the same length, and the rules of the dial plan of the IPBX. If in the PBX, users needed to dial zero to call out, might as well keep the same rule in the IPBX. So everything needs to be taken into account in the dial plan of the gateway. So we have a few difficulties here. So we need to enable the PBX and the IPBX to call out. We need to enable the PBX and the IPBX to call each other. And we need to take into account dial plan of the PBX. We cannot change it, either because you don't know how the solution works or because, well, the client doesn't want to change the way its employees are working because it's a lot of people and lot, lots of habits which needs to be changed. So the solutions to those problems uh, are, can be solved in the dial plan. So we will make rules depending on the prefix of the DID, so of the destination of the number which will be called and on the length of this number. So if the called number has three digits, we will make both systems talk to each other. If there are more than three digits, then they will call outside. All right. So let, let's take a look at the situation here. Here we have extensions 101 to 199, for example, are all on the PBX. Therefore, we start, we start with extension 200 something on the IPBX. This is just an example. Uh, what you need to know is the numbers within the PBX, and then you can define the new numbers within the IPBX. So if extension 201 wants to call extension 101, well, what we said is if you want to call out, first you dial zero. So you will call 0101. And the, IP, the IPBX will say, well, the number starts with zero, so I need to send it to the Baronet Gateway. The Baronet Gateway receives a number which has three digits, so the call will be sent to the PBX. And the PBX receives the call for the extension 101. So it will be sent to the extension 101. Then if the extension 201 wants to call outside, it will start with zero, dial the number. The IPBX receives the number and sends it to the gateway because it starts with zero. And the gateway receives a call that's, that has more than three digits. So we send the call to the outside. 
for calls between the PBX and the outside, it's a bit the same. If extension 102 wants to call outside, it starts with zero, has more than three digits, therefore the dial plan of the PBX has been respected. The gateway receives a number from the PBX with more than three digits, so we send it to the outside. If extension 102 wants to call extension 201, the number called has three digits, so when the gateway receives it, it will send it to the IPBX. Of course, this, these are only examples, and it all depends on the way the users are working on the PBX and on the way you want to design your IPBX. But these are tricks within the BeerNet dial plan in order to make everything work well. For incoming calls, you need to take a decision. If somebody is calling your number, this is the BeerNet's number, the gateway will choose if the call should be sent to the PBX or the IPBX. And this, you have to make a decision. Do we want to have the calls be sent to the PBX or the new system. I would say it depends on which, uh, how far you are in the soft migration. If you have most of your extensions located in the PBX, might as well say, well, the main rule is all calls go to the PBX. However, we have a few extensions that are on the PBX side. So if somebody wants to call a number, one of those extensions, so in our example, those extensions start with two. We say that all calls for extensions to something need to be sent to the IPBX. So this is also a rule we will have to implement in the gateway, saying, oh, we receive a, a call for BeerNet, but for extension 200 something, so we send the call not to the PBX, but to the IPBX. And then number uh, extension 201 receives the information. Regarding the configuration of the gateway, we will have to configure two parts. First, the ASDN part, and then the SIP part. If I take a look at the ASDN part, here we have the NT port and the TE port. In my example, we have one line connected to the PBX and one line connected to the outside. It could be two, it could be four, whatever. What's important is that we have exactly the same number of lines connected as NT as, as T, so that the PBX can still do as many calls as it could before. The gateway has to be transparent on the ISDN part. So we will have a group of ports connected as NT and the other group of ports connected as TE. On the SIP part, we only have to connect the gateway to the IPBX. This is a simple SIP trunk, which is quite easy to implement. Once we have designed everything, so as we can see on this picture, we have three different parts, the PBX to the inside, uh, sorry, the ISDN to the inside, the ISDN to the outside, and the IPBX on the SIP part. We need to configure everything thanks to the dial plan to connect everything. So in the dial plan we need to set well to create three pairs of rules. There are the rules between the PBX. We will define them saying calls coming from one PBX and who want to go to the other need to have three digits because the length of the of the extensions is three. Then we have the calls to the ISDN part, so to the outside. We say that if the PBX wants to call the IPBX, it has to be three digits long. But if the PBX wants to call out, it has to be more than three digits. Or, so for all other calls, the gateway will send it to the outside. And then we have calls from the ISDN part. First, we will create a, a rule saying Calls to extensions to something need to be sent to the IPBX. All other calls will be sent 
to the PBX. So I made a screenshot of the way the dial plan looks like, and it looks like this. On the direction part, we have the direction technologies. So on this part, it doesn't, it's not very easy to understand because we have only ISDN and SIP and we have six rules. So we have to take a look at the IDs. The two first rules connect both PBX. We have rules from the ISDN PBX going to the IPBX when the destination, meaning the number called, has three digits. We have the rule that goes the other way around. Calls coming from PBX will be sent to the IPBX when the uh, number called has three digits. In this part, we have ISDN to SIP and uh, SIP to ISDN and ISDN to SIP. The ISDN is the outside lines and the SIP is the IPBX. We have a specific rule. When the IPBX calls a number with three digits, it will be sent to the PBX. This is more precise than this rule, the rule under it that says for any call, the gateway will send the calls coming from the SIP IPBX to the ISDN lines. Therefore, the more precise rule is, ab oops, is above the other one. So if the IPBX calls a number with three digits, it will be sent to the PBX. If it has more, or less actually, but usually it will be more, more than three digits, it will be sent to the ISDN lines. Then we have the rules that takes into account calls coming from ISDN and that needs to go to the IPBX. What we said is only calls for extensions to something need to be sent to the IPBX. Therefore, we put it here into account that the calls that want to reach extension to something need to be sent to the IPBX. And finally, we have the rules that take into account both ISDN technologies, so calls coming from the ISDN lines and going to the PBX. So we have the rule number four and rule number five are the last part we created, meaning say, when we differentiate the income, some incoming calls should go to the IPBX in some specific cases, all other calls should be sent to the PBX. And then we have the ISDN PBX to ISDN lines for all calls which have more than three digits. Uh, I have a question. Uh, shouldn't rule, rule four be first since it's more specific? So we have the rule four, it's here. It's actually more specific than rule five, indeed. Um, but it's in com competition, I would say, only with rule five, because it's, we have only two rules that take into account the ISDN lines as source of the call. Therefore, even though this rule is more precise than this one, it doesn't matter because they don't have the same uh, from ID. Hope it's clear. So of course, it's somehow more precise, but the information of the rules are not the same, therefore both rules will be able to apply. Okay, so as you can see, we can make mistakes quite easily, and if a mistake has been done, it might happen that the PBX or the IPBX doesn't receive the right calls or that nothing works. Therefore, if the installation is very specific, and uh, well, you never want to make any mistakes, especially if your client is still working. Therefore, we have this tool, this product, which is called the failover switch, which comes quite handy in that kind of uh, scenarios. I mean, another drawing in order to explain you better. So, the failover switch enables you to configure the gateway calmly and if the configuration of the gateway 
is not perfect, it doesn't matter. Because, as you can see here, we connect ports A with the ISDN provider, and the failover switch will either connect the calls to ports B in order to have them go through the gateway, or directly to port D if you don't want to have the calls going through the gateway. Meaning that if you're sure of the configuration of the gateway, the calls will come in, go to port B, and the gateway will decide if the call should be sent to the IPBX or to port C and then to the PBX. If you notice that your configuration is not perfectly done and it doesn't work well, then you connect ports A and port D together and the calls will come from port A, go to port D as there was no gateway installed. Then you can turn the gateway on again, try your new configuration, see if it works. If it doesn't work, you have time to contact us, we have time to take a look, and there's no stress. So if you want to have a soft migration in the best conditions possible, I would say use the failover switch so that uh, you have a clear mind. Do you have questions regarding the technical part? So about the dial plan and everything. Questions for the moment? Don't hesitate if you have anything to ask. So as we can see, we have oops, different technologies in such a soft migration. We have analog technologies, ISDN, and SIP. Right now, the gateway connects only ISDN to SIP, but it might happen that the PBX involved is an analog, PB, analog one. Therefore, you will need to use an analog gateway. In any case, the gateway that you will use will enable you to connect all those technologies together. What we try to do here at Beernet is to make this easy. Therefore, our gateways respect a certain philosophy, which has four points. So first of all, the gateways that you will install are cloud managed, meaning that if you're not sure of the configuration or if you want to have feedback all the time, you can connect the gateway to the cloud, access the web interface of the gateway as if you were on site and so on. You can also receive alarms and make sure that everything works well. So this is free for our partners. Then the installation of our gateways is quite easy. You have always a web interface to help you configure the gateway, wizards, and everything. Our gateways are also very open, meaning that they are compatible with all the situations, all the technologies you have on market. So whatever the PBX it is, whatever the IPBX, we are compatible with it. And then we have a modular situation, a modular gateway, meaning that you can design the gateway of your choice for your client. We have seven different gateways, seven, sorry, seven different modules, and you can simply choose the baseboard and add the, gate, the modules of your choice in order to create the right gateway appropriate for your end clients. Um, I have another question, another question regarding dial plan. I'm going to answer it right away. First, I wanted to finish. Uh, if you need more information, we have a blog on, on which you can find lots of information regarding how to use news at Bernet and so on, especially the technical part of the blog are quite interesting. We have a clear blog article about the dial plan. And if you have questions about the blog articles, don't hesitate to Left, leave comments and then we will make it better or answer you directly. Uh, we organize webinars like today and the next one is how to connect the BRNet gateway with 3CX V15 uh, because the configuration of gateways has changed a little bit since 3CX made an update. And we also offer uh, tech trainings that are available on uh, our technical kit. So if you're interested, please uh, contact us and we'll help you uh, depending on what you need. 
And if you want to become a partner, uh, we'll be glad to uh, have you as a partner. Uh, you get the technical training, technical support, access to the Baronet Cloud, extra discount at the uh, distributor, and especially leads uh, when we have leads from end clients in your region.